Okay. I want to get now into one of the most important things for the next four chapters. Profit maximizing rule of production. We had a profit maximizing rule for elasticity. We now have one for our production. Now, first, what was production? You make that production decision in the short run. What was that? It was how much to produce. That's what you have control over as a purely competitive business. How much do you want to put out there? One of the things that's unique to pure competition is that they face a horizontal demand curve. A horizontal demand curve. They are insignificant. They can sell however much they want at the going rate. Therefore, marginal revenue, which is the change in total revenue associated with the last unit sold, is always equal to price. Because if I sell one unit, price is right here. Sell my second unit, price is still here. Third, price is still here. This is unique to pure competition. I would probably put that on my list. That they have a unique function, the MR equals P. Now, that's how the book's going to list this. But I don't want you to memorize that rule. I want you to memorize the rule that applies to every industry structure. And that is that you produce at a point where MR equals MC. I want to sell units all the way up to the point where my cost per unit is, is exactly what I'm getting per unit. The reason for that is that as I produce more and more, marginal cost increases. As production goes up, marginal cost goes up. As production goes down, marginal cost goes down. If I had stopped short of where these were equal, I wouldn't squeeze out every last penny that I could. So when it comes to this profit maximizing rule of production, this is the ideal. If you get a situation where MR is less than MC, meaning you're getting less than it costs you to produce it, reduce production. If you get a situation where MR is greater than MC, increase production. This is a hard, fast rule. This is one of those like in elasticity that at a glance you should know what they should do. That should always be your goal. Produce where MR equals MC. That's where you want to be. If one of these conditions exists, adjust production to get that. That's what you want to do. In this chapter, instead of MR, they're going to use P. And that's real. And it's because they're equal. I want you to memorize it this way because for the next four chapters, as we go through each of the industry structures, this will always be true. This is only true in pure competition. So I don't want you to be fooled with that. On this list, I would also put, they produce where MR equals MC. That is their profit maximizing point. Another thing I would list here is horizontal demand curve. That is something that's unique to only their structure. I want you to be prepared with this. Now, I want to talk about how my tomato farming falls into all this. If suddenly the price of tomatoes goes up to $5 a piece, I will go home, plow up my entire yard, and plant tomatoes. How many tomato farmers are there out there? There's a lot. Each one is insignificant to the production of the whole. A tomato is a tomato, an identical product. How hard was it for me to become a tomato farmer? Very easy. Low barriers to entry. I have no market power because I'm insignificant. I should produce where MR equals MC, and I can sell all that I want at the going rate. The only thing I've got to worry about is this cost structure. I've got to produce where I maximize my profit. That's how it works. Now, if the next day tomatoes drop to 50 cents, guess what? I'm out of there. I can replant grass, get out, no problem at all. This is an issue where you'll see these kinds of 
industries or these kinds of companies. They, this is how they survive in, in there. Now, after this, our next segment is going to focus on the other short run decision, which as you recall, is the shutdown point. We'll focus our efforts there next.